Hey, I'm Ryan. I'm going to tell you a story about me, some bad habits that I developed, and the impact that those habits had on a part of my career. I'll tell you a bit about how I deal with them and minimize the effects that they have on me, and where I am today. It's a bit of a personal talk, not all of this will necessarily apply to everyone, but there are some takeaways for anyone who ever mentors another human, and you might even see some of these qualities in yourself. My goal is to save someone from developing these kind of bad habits and help you mentor people who may have developed these habits in themselves. I also want to say thanks to the managers who helped me along the way. I'm very lucky to have a pretty solid relationship with all the managers that I work with, and they really helped me like identify some of these things in myself and work through them. So who am I? My name is Ryan. I'm a senior production engineer at Shopify. Um, what that means is our focus is on reliability and speed for commerce and developers. I myself focus on Ruby type safety, so like Sorbet, uh, Tapioca, Spoon related tools, how we use those tools at Shopify and improving those tools for the world and the community. I'm not a psychologist, uh, I am very hard on myself, and we'll see how that plays into things. So what we'll talk about. Uh, my story about how I self-shit-talked my way into convincing people that I was bad at my job. What that looked like specifically, what behaviors I was actually doing, what goes on inside my head, some other habits that I have, and breaking bad habits. How does that work? Importantly, we'll talk about mentoring other people who might be in similar positions. So, what's my story? I'm a pretty anxious person. I always have been. And unchecked, I can tend to spiral into catastrophizing little things. Um, to give you an example, at my first job after university, my manager one day cracked a joke on a Friday that said something like, um, big news coming Monday, Ryan, ha <laughs> ha. I redid my resume that weekend because I assumed it was going to be terrible news. It turns out that it was just like new coffee in our kitchenette. I told him I like light roasts and he managed to get some in. I think he knew he'd get me worked up, but I don't think he knew quite to the extent that I would be worked up by that. But anyway, um, my point is that I have a bit of a tendency to blow seemingly little things up in my head into mountains. Um, this includes misunderstanding something or like not knowing the answer to something or miscommunications. I would often use self-deprecating humor as a coping mechanism for this. So like, I made the coffee wrong, I'm a dunce, ha 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 ha. Um, academically, I would t kind of beat myself up a little bit if I did poorly, or even fine really, to some extent. But I guess because I was new to my career in the workforce, I was a little bit more gentle on myself. Um, I guess I felt like I'm new, I'm supposed to be learning and asking lots of questions, and um, that really saved me from beating myself up too much professionally. So during school, I had a pretty successful internship at an acronym company, and after I graduated, I ended up working at a super neat startup in my hometown that is these days definitely no longer a startup called Verifin. They're doing some pretty cool stuff. In both cases, I was new, junior, learning, and that was totally okay. I said the company that I would leave home for, the only one that I would consider leaving home for would be Shopify. And in 2016, the opportunity knocked, so away we go. I love it. I love working at Shopify so much. And I grew a lot here. I learned so much so fast, and I grew so much as a person. And after a year or so in my head, I think I, I'd grown beyond the I'm still learning justification that had protected me from myself in the earlier parts of my career. You can call this imposter syndrome if you're into that term. I do often refer to it that way, but either way, I got in my head that everyone around me is way smarter than me and I'm playing catch up with all of them. Now, being surrounded by people who are way smarter than you is both wonderful from a growth perspective, but I kind of became self-conscious. Like, what am I bringing to the table here? So I started to hold myself to a really high standard. So 
when I started at Shopify, I was on a team focused on developer tooling about production runtime quality. Make it easy for developers to run their code in production on our infrastructure and keep it running really well. So this included reminders to like keep gems up to date and Ruby versions up to date and things like that before the days of Dependabot. But it also included incident tooling, incident management, um, follow-up action items from outages, things like that. During this time, I started to become interested in ways to increase my impact at work. I wanted to do more, and I was keen to become a senior production engineer. I ended up moving to a team closer to the metal. We did a lot of work on how developers and service owners experience our infrastructure. So observability into our Kubernetes clusters, interacting with the infrastructure with handy guardrails in place, and deploying their code to Kubernetes. Um, this is a good time to plug Crane, which is an open source library that Shopify maintains. Um, it helps you deploy your code to Kubernetes and understand the result. I got to work on that a little bit, and that was really neat. So as I was joining this team, my new manager legit thought I was struggling. Like he thought he was onboarding someone who was having quite a lot of trouble with their job. But here I am in my head thinking, I might be considered for a promotion at some point in the near future. All of this was because of how I portrayed myself and how I conducted myself in Slack channels and pull requests and meetings, things like that. I had convinced people that I barely knew that I wasn't any good at my job. Well, shit, what happened here? I had a lot of growing left to do. My way of beating myself up, thinly veiled in self-deprecating humor, had actually negatively affected people's perception of me. To my immediate team, with whom I had started, they saw me as someone who had done a lot of learning and a lot of growing, become more comfortable with Ruby and Rails. I'd been mentoring interns. Um, I'd been leading projects. I was a little bit moody, but my impact was positive. It was the people outside of that team and the team that I would be join joining who thought I was struggling. So I definitely wasn't even considered to be promoted. I had a lot of habits to break, and some of these habits were projected outwards in how I portrayed myself. And some of these were in my head, and they were holding me back, and they were all my own doing. Thankfully, my manager was really keen to work with me on these things, and it was a tough chat, but I learned a lot. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, how we portray ourselves to others. What was I doing that I was broadcasting this negative image of myself to people? Self-deprecating humor. It might be fine amongst your closest friends if you have that relationship. Fine, that's awesome. But in general, your coworkers don't know you the same way that your immediate friends know you. They probably trust you, and they only have your word to go by, so... Slack, GitHub issues, and even hallway chats, meetings, are relatively public forums. If you consistently crap on yourself in places where people can see it who don't actually know you very well, they might actually start to believe you. You might convince people that you're not good at what you do. That's exactly what I did. So it's really important to break the habit of putting yourself down. The second piece here I call the opinion escape hatch. It, I feel like it acts as a way to mentally prepare yourself for if or when you're wrong about something. It sort of looks like this. I'm probably wrong, but I think X, Y, Z. Or like finishing your sentence with, I have no idea what I'm doing. You don't need to qualify your opinions. If someone asks you what you think about something, or if you're doing code review or whatever, you don't need to, to do that. Now there's a difference between admitting when you don't know something, that is a great behavior, especially for senior people. But telling people you don't know anything at all, that's pretty bad. Uncertainty is okay. It's just that rephrasing how you're expressing that uncertainty, and that goes a long way. You can say things like, I'll have to dig into this a bit more, but off the top of my head, or I think X, Y, Z, but I'm keen for feedback. You also don't have to qualify your opinions at all, but if you're going to, we'll talk about replacement when we get to breaking habits. So 
when I was writing this talk, my partner pointed out that this slide might actually just be a Canadian thing, but I'm leaving it in here because it illustrates a larger point and it's something to look out for. Apologizing excessively for behaviors that are utterly normal is a bad sign. For me, it would come from a place of expecting myself to know the answer to my question in advance. Setting unattainably high expectations of ourselves is not great, but besides all that, it can get really annoying for your coworkers if you just apologize for everything, and that kind of sucks. We need to let go of the expectation that we should know certain things in advance or understand technical concepts without asking for clarification. This all relates back to defeating yourself, right? Like putting yourself down, being frustrated, holding yourself to unreachable standards. You're setting yourself up for failure. In the worst case, this will negatively affect what opportunities come your way, and it might set you back. It set me back. It could have been worse, certainly, for me, but I was a full year of busting a lot of these outward-facing habits, and I still catch myself doing some of these things. The point is that you wouldn't be publicly mean to your coworkers, like you wouldn't put them down in a GitHub issue, like, haha, person A doesn't know anything about what they're talking about. So why would you do that to yourself? Be patient with yourself. So all of these were very outward facing habits and we'll get to breaking these things shortly, but critically there are some internal habits that I still struggle with and that I think a lot of people might struggle with. A lot of these things stemmed from me convincing myself that I should know something that I don't or that I wasn't smart for not knowing the answer in advance, or whatever. I really needed to reshape my internal dialogue. And these are some things that I experienced that I keep in mind, and maybe they'll apply to you, maybe they won't, maybe you'll notice them in other people. Hopefully this helps someone. So one of the biggest things for me was hindsight. Um, unchecked, I have a tendency to trivialize the work I've completed or things I accomplished with the benefit of hindsight. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Things like looking back on something I did and thinking that should not have taken me that long, that was easy, or like I should have known that already, or I feel even things like I, ha I feel like this isn't worth sharing because if I thought of it, it surely is obvious to others. I did this over and over while I was writing this talk, if I'm honest. Sort of started to wonder if maybe all these things were super obvious and I was just really slow to discover that they existed. And to be clear, what I'm talking about is different than reflecting on work that you've completed and trying to understand where you could improve, what you'd have done differently, what you learned. That is a really great habit. But what I'm referring to is thinking that you should have had that knowledge that you would gain from that reflection in advance. I think there are some things that can help with this. A brag doc can really help here. This exercises the muscles needed to pat yourself on the back and it allows you to focus on the journey. So every problem can be broken down into sub problems and each of those is a neat little accomplishment for your brag doc. If you keep the journey in mind, you can reflect on all the cool shit that you did along the way. It's also important, I think, to learn how to celebrate wins. Honestly, this can be uncomfortable. I prefer private written recognition because I'm really shy about compliments, but openly celebrating accomplishments is important for a number of reasons. It's great exercise for you. People will recognize your name associated with something positive, and it makes your team look great. It's important. If you can, push your comfort zone a little bit here, and if you're already open to it, A+. Plus. Keep celebrating. Internal standards, I think, is a theme woven throughout what I'm talking about. A lot of these issues come from expecting myself to know things that maybe I shouldn't know yet, a fear of failure, or, and how people would perceive me if I did fail. We have to give ourselves the flexibility and the freedom to be wrong about things. Learning doesn't end. You don't suddenly know how to write code perfectly and that's the end of your journey. 
Get back to normalizing not knowing something. Pairing with others on things you aren't sure about can be great exercise for this. Ask lots of questions, but make sure you're not told the answer. Fumble through it. You'll learn a lot, and you'll get used to not knowing things again, which is great. Negative self-talk. So this is an extension of the last point. Beating ourselves up over mistakes, miscommunications, misunderstandings, things like that. We just talked about normalizing the journey of not knowing something, fumbling through discovery. We talked about giving yourself the flexibility and the freedom to be wrong. And critically, that means experiencing failure without punishing yourself. I like to think of failure as the successful discovery of something that didn't work. You have to give yourself credit for trying, not punishment. And I think the worst outcome of all of this is avoidance. If you avoid taking on challenges and talking yourself out of opportunities due to a fear of failure, this is the epitome of shooting yourself in the foot, really. You'll learn less, you'll grow slower, it may hinder your career advancement, and it may affect how people think about you and your impact. Skirting this is hard and it requires some bravery. But if we bust some of the habits that we just talked about, we can set ourselves up to take on these new challenges. This discomfort is where most growth happens, but you can't start down this path if you talk down on yourself. If you hold yourself to impossible standard of already knowing everything, or if you cling to the comfort of hindsight, it's going to be tough to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Be kind to yourself the way you would be to a friend. So we talked about a bunch of examples of really bad habits. Um, let's talk a little bit about how to actually break these habits. There's a lot written about this in the world, but let's go through some things that I found have been very helpful to me and we'll see where we get. I find that most bad habits have a trigger of some sorts. Like people say habits exist for a reason, whether that's rational or irrational. Identifying some of these triggers is a great first step. For example, maybe being put on the spot in meetings or in one-on-ones is stressful. The stress of wanting to give like the right answer might trigger you to use the opinion escape hatch as an example. If someone asks you a point blank question, you might say, well, I think X, but uh, I'm bad at this. Setting some clear boundaries and sticking to them can be really helpful. I try to set the expectation with the people around me that I don't really like being asked point-blank questions about something without any time to mentally prepare for it. But of course, you can't always avoid this, but you can make it clear that you're speculating without crapping on yourself. So that brings us to our next habit-breaking tip, which is substitution. Replacing the bad habit or the behavior you're trying to get rid of with a different behavior, like as a one-to-one -one replacement, is pretty handy. If you can intercept yourself being ready to drop some like self-deprecating humor on yourself and replace it instead with something constructive or at least neutral, that's an excellent technique. It is difficult. You want to set attainable goals around this. Uh, to try and like catch yourself putting yourself down once a day or three times a week or whatever and gradually build up. This might look like taking the phrase, I'm bad at this, and replacing it with, I'll have to dig into it a little bit more. One is negative, the other one's positive, right? Like you're going to go learn something. That's great. Um, asynchronous communication is a really great place to practice this sort of stuff. If you're not already proofreading your issue comments or your code review input or your Slack messages even for negative self-talk before you hit send, you can totally start. The person you're messaging or the person waiting for your code review will never even know you did it. Leave a reminder to yourself somewhere about the habit you're trying to bust, like a little note to self. This might actually be a physical note that says something like don't say sorry or it's okay to ask questions, but it could also be a proxy object. I have a little toy dumpster with an N95 mask on my desk that has become 
a little reminder for myself not to speak negatively about myself. I have no idea why it became this, but I see it and it pops into my head and I love it. It's handy. Either way, you want something to remind yourself about the behavior you're trying to break and that can be very powerful. Here's my little dumpster fire. It's very 2020. Keep in mind during this that slip ups will happen. You will catch yourself saying or thinking something mean about yourself and those slips are totally okay. They're a part of the journey too. They're little learnings. Set attainable goals for yourself and slowly build them up. The worst thing that a person who has a tendency to be hard on themselves can do is set a goal that they can't possibly accomplish. So small, easy baby steps, great. Be patient with yourself and reward yourself. This looks different for different people, of course, but it might be something like giving yourself permission to pat yourself on the back or I play guitar loud during lunch because screw it, I earned it. Maybe you sleep in extra, whatever works for you. It's worth restating, I straight up just copy pasted this slide because I think it's important. Be patient with yourself. And be there for each other. So you might identify these behaviors in other people and we'll talk a little bit about how you might catch those things and what might be done about it. People might find it very difficult to identify these habits in themselves. I didn't realize I was doing these things. So depending on your relationship with people, you might be able to help them out a bit. If you have an established mentor-mentee relationship with someone, you might actually be able to do a lot for them. This also applies broadly to senior engineers and leads. I would argue that if you're a senior engineer, you're a mentor for your team. So this applies to you. In general, you want to keep out for the thing, uh, keep an eye out, sorry, for the things that we talked about in the portraying ourselves section. Self-deprecating humor in public forums, apologizing a lot, talking negatively about their own work, or maybe even the team's work. Um, very importantly, you want to identify people who are talking them out, the, the, talking themselves out of challenges. Look for patterns as well. If you notice it once in a blue moon, maybe it's not so bad, maybe it's not a massive problem, but if you see a pattern, there might be something there. And if it is a problem, you can certainly help. So like I mentioned before, the extent to which you want to suggest behavioral changes to someone without it getting weird is really dependent on the relationship that you have with the person. So let's say you don't know the person very well. Uh, someone out of the blue pings you randomly to ask something that your team or you might happen to know, and they start off their message with, I have a crappy question. This is common. 90% of the time, it's innocent enough. It's kind of a social thing at this point. But I would largely encourage everyone anyway to just say something like, there are no bad questions. I defer to you on that one. I think we should just normalize saying that. If you do know the person well enough to notice that there are patterns, or if you're genuinely a little put off by how hard they are on themselves, you might want to mention it. You don't have to make things sound doom and gloom, but hell, you can just tell people my story. That's great. If you have a relatively formal mentor-mentee relationship with a person, in my opinion, you should bring these things up. Tell them the behaviors that you've noticed in them, tell them some of the ways it might impact them, and help them set some goals around changing these behaviors. Uh, pair programming and problem solving are really great ways to help people get used to being in that learning zone. So as a mentor or a guide in these sort of situations, you really have to resist the temptation of giving people the answers outright. Ensure that you create a safe space for them to experiment and flounder and try and fail Figure out beforehand if they're looking for specific feedback or not so you can avoid like evaluating per se unless that's what they need. Keep in mind this is their time. And make sure to celebrate accomplishments. Uh, leads and senior developers can really help here I think. To whatever extent your reports are comfortable, make sure to celebrate wins. 
not just on an individual level, but if the team ships something cool, really make time to celebrate that. This doesn't exclude your like retrospectives and making time to talk about what you could do better next time, but I think they should be separate things. A post-project meeting that includes what went well, what didn't go well on the agenda is not celebration time. If you want to dig into habit breaking with someone you mentor, help them set some goals. Maybe start with substitution of the bad habit three times a week instead of writing, I am inept, write, today I learned this thing. This is what my manager did with me. You can't read people's minds, so don't try too hard to figure out their triggers. You can make some suggestions, but this is something very personal that you want them to think about. If they know any, you can help them set boundaries around those triggers and goals to react to them more positively. Try your best to manage the person's expectations of themselves as well. We talk a lot about normalizing failure and normalizing learning and trying and failing. That's true, that's great, but replacing a self-defeating habit with a better habit isn't something you want people to fail at. So set the bar, very attainable, celebrate those wins, support them. If you're a senior developer or a lead, you're a role model on the team. There is a hierarchy there. People do look up to you. So try to keep the energy positive on the team. Be productive and constructive. You don't have to always be faking a smile and you're certainly allowed to have bad days. You're our human after all, but watch for patterns. If you have a pattern of being hard on yourself or negative or grumpy, that'll probably rub off to the other members of the team. Ultimately, you want to strive to create an environment where everyone feels like they can contribute to the team and learn. An environment where they feel like they have permission to try and fail, to trip and get back up again. People should feel supported to the extent that they need. Everyone on the team may expect this of you to varying degrees and in different ways, and that's perfectly okay. So make sure you show up for people in the way that they need you to. And be there for each other be nice. <laughs> so let us recap. The way you talk about or portray yourself in a professional setting affects the way people perceive you. If you frame yourself in a negative way often enough for long enough, people will start to notice and they will start to believe you. The opinion escape hatch, self-deprecating humor, negative self-talk, trivializing your own work, these are some of the bad habits that might come up. The good news is, these are all habits that you can break. There's a lot written about breaking habits all over the internet. There are examples in this talk. You got this. Keep in mind that learning is a forever journey. You don't get to a point where you've learned everything and from there on you're expected to be perfect. So keep embracing that journey and keep learning. Normalize failure, normalize not knowing things. And pass this on. Help lift up the people around you. If you notice the people you mentor are struggling with these habits, whether they realize it or not, you can help them. You can help by setting attainable goals, uh, pair programming if people dig that, and showing up for people in general. Make sure that you're a good role model for the people around you. And if you're a senior and above IC or a manager on a team, be mindful of the type of environment that you're creating on the team. People should feel empowered to try and fail and learn. Productive and constructive, not negative. Just let's be nice to each other. So since you made it all the way to the end, uh, this is maybe in Harry. Maybe likes to knock stuff off my desk while I work. She also has a big fluffy tail and she enjoy, enjoys dunking that tail in my coffee or beer or whatever I have on my desk. Harry has no tail at all. He's a Manx. He likes to borrow around in clean laundry and scream for tuna and chase maybe around the house. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> have a good RailsConf everyone. Uh, stay safe, be well, and thank you for watching. Go be nice to each other. Uh, oh, and if you want to get in touch, I'm rhymebrushit at hey.com. I also have a website with my like social links and a blog that I never update. I might make a blog post about something like this or the process of writing this talk. Who knows? Um, you can find me there. So, uh, yeah, enjoy.